and verse 20. Chapter 20. Chapter 17, verse 20. I do not ask on behalf of these alone, but for those also who believe in me through the word, that they may all be one, even as you, Father, are in me, and I in you, that they also may be in us, so that the world may believe that you sent me. The glory which you have given me, I have given to them, that they may be one, just as we are one. I in them and you in me, that they may be perfected in unity, so that the world may know that you sent me and love them even as you love, love me. Father, I desire that they also whom, whom you have given me be with me where I am, so that they may see my glory which you have given me, for you loved me before the foundation of the world. O righteous Father, Although the world has not known you, yet I have known you. And these have, not, have known that you sent me. I have made your name known to them, and I will make it known, so that the love with which you love me may be in them, and I in them. In this prayer, in Jesus Christ, in he's, do, he's making it in public, so everybody can hear him. He's not praying for the world. For th but for those whom you gave, you have given me, says the Lord. The Lord has dominion over the people, they are believers. They have been given from the Father, the Son. The Father attracted us to His Son. And Jesus Christ received us and added us to the church. And we accepted that He is the Lord and our God. It's significant to recognize that we belong to the, uh, uh, the Trinary God. God the Father who revealed us to His Son, to Son Jesus Christ who received us from the Father and, and He made us His body. And it's important to understand just as my arm belongs to me and it does whatever the head d uh, asks the arm to do, Likewise, the Church of Christ, as we are members of His body and members of each other, belong the body of Christ, we are of Christ, and we submit to the head of the body, which is Christ. Jesus Christ rules us. He is our teacher. And our master is the one who teaches, teaches, teaches us to the path which we should take in every detail in, of our lives. In the will of God, in, which is pleasing and perfect. The prayer of Jesus Christ. Uh, as as he recognizes that we belong to Christ, we are property of Christ, we are the people of God, he's praying, thus, the very first prayer, Holy Father, keep them with your name, keep them in your paternal love. Yours are mine, and mine are yours. We are one, Father. Keep, keep, them, keep them safe in your paternal love, so that they may be one as we are one. And this, this love that exists in, in Christians, as is the f love of Son to the Father, it's a paternal love, 
God the Father who keeps us safe in his arms of the Father. He's our defender and protector and our God and Lord. The second wish of the prayer of Jesus Christ is for our joy to be full and it will be when Christ puts in, in us his joy. The joy of Christians does not depend on the uh, on having a good time or success um, that they have, but s depends solely only on the joy that Christ puts on in his dis in his disciples. Even though in this world we would have sorrow, it, it is a miracle that happens only to, in Christians for those who keep the commandments of Jesus Christ it's a great miracle to sustain and keep the joy within us and our joy to be full which is a result not of our uh, having a good time but a result of keeping the commandments of whom we belong to. Meaning, we s depend solely on Him. A Christian who makes that steadfast decision, I cannot do many things on my own. Without you, I can do nothing. I don't have any power. I don't have any skills, abilities. The only thing I can invest in you in order for you to increase it and to see good results is my will i w i want you to be my lord i want you i want to belong to your body i want to be ruled by your holy spirit i want my master teacher to be you and my teacher an instructor to be only you to be Lord. I want to belong to you fully, Lord, in the body and soul and spirit. And finally, I want to keep all your commandments. I want that. And that want, it's more than enough. Then the weaker is the man that wants to. The stronger the that man is in his life, we, that we don't have anything else to invest in, especially in Christ. We don't have anything else significant. And if somebody thinks that he has abilities, he doesn't have any. Wisdom, he doesn't have any. Power, he doesn't have any. He makes... He's making, f uh, he's mocking himself and others. Wretched and worthless people we are, and we are to blame for many things. And our righteousness, even if it was perfect, in humans, if it, even if righteousness was perfect, and in God, it, was, it is like a dirty garment. We are, f that's who we are. We're, we're flesh, we are humans. If somebody closes our nose, we're done. If God withdraws His grace, we're done. And this understanding and awareness leads a man leads to God, and this is the uh, this uh, and this is a humility of man. Uh, and this uh, this humility is not that I'm a humble and I'm humbling myself. This is hypocrisy. I'm not significant. I'm humbling myself because of need, because of my need. And w woe to me if I'm, thi I'm thinking that there's something else. This is the awareness of the truthfulness of the reality that I'm, I'm living in. And 
And man can discern this when he sees his brother and anyone else. He's his brother and fellow man. If he, if he sees him um, like a person who has the same, the same nature as he, yeah, but, uh, but he's a fool, though, if he thinks that the next person to him is a superior or inferior and he compares himself to him. I know that I am a wretched and worthless and, and nothing. I have no abilities. And I know that I live within people of unclean lips. Just like I am the kind of person with, un with defiled lips. Great awareness. That's why I rejoice in my humility, says Apostle Paul. That's why I rejoice that when I, s when I sun myself, or when I have go through sorrows, because when God allows to go through afflictions, miserable times. He does this in order to deduct or remove any trace that in my weakness, his power may be proven to be perfect. Out of love, God does this. And out of wisdom, that's, that is from above. I recognize this. And my daily life, it's imperative. And, w and when I humble myself, I find grace before God. And I express the only thing that I have to offer to the Lord. The only significant, the only thing that's significant that I can offer to the Lord Look, this is the only thing I have. I want to love you, Lord. I want to follow you. I want you to be my Lord, my God. I want to do your commandments. I want your sanctification. I want your grace, your mercy, your love, your word, your Holy Spirit. I want, Lord. And then the Lord comes. Whoever wants to come come and follow me behind me, it's imperative that he denies himself to lift up his cross and follow me. And I will lead him from grace to grace, from faith to faith, from glory to glory. And I'll bring him to the, the heavenly kingdom. And even, even if I'm obedient to everything, and I'm found to be pr to be valuable in the eyes of God. God is the one who will be glorified. That's how man is transformed by the grace of Christ, which is in, in, is important. It's because it's that grace that teaches me to deny wor worldliness and live in in understanding and modesty and this wicked um, uh, and this internal uh, this um, wicked age so I can live then the uh, blessed hope of the kingdom of Jesus Christ and this hope is revealed to the humble people and those humble people are those who the grace teaches thus our Lord knowing the details of the human life. He makes this beautiful prayer. Father, keep them in this perfect weakness from the, from the wicked one. The only danger that the uh, wicked man is is in pebble is Satan, which fools 
provokes, he scares, intimidates, accuses, he poisons the uh, soul of man, and he fools even, if possible, the chosen people of Christ. And Lord Jesus Christ, he knows the peril the man go through, and that's why he's praying for those people in Father, please, he's saying, keep them in your love because they are in the world, but they are not of the world. And they belong to you, Father. And if you keep them, in the end, sanctify them. And this sanctification comes from the Father through the word of the truth. Sanctification from the word of Jesus Christ, his gospel, sanctifying them in your truth. Be careful, take heed not to be to be fooled with other teachings in other viewpoints, philosophies, uh, false doctrines that will put a distance from your presence from your and your glory. Sanctify them and in your truth and your word is truth. Sanctify them wholly, truthful, honest, sincere. Now, I intend to to send them ready as as you send me. Jesus Christ does not send everyone. He he sends those who prepares. And this preparation, just like it was described, he has there is an uh, understanding of paternal life. Uh, knowledge of f and understanding of whom Jesus Christ came from, that the Word of God is the truth, that we belong to God the Father, and God the Father turned us over to His Son, Jesus Christ, and knowing also that the Father, because of Jesus Christ, keeps us to be, to be one in the, in the church with the paternal love, and this understanding we possess n uh, that we have not because of the events in our life but we keep the the word and we want to keep the word and that's why jesus christ fills us with his joy and that we have the knowledge also and awareness that we are kept safe from the evil one and that we are prepared also from Jesus Christ and He sends us. And thus Jesus Christ works through His sanctification and our sanctification to be so we can all be one in the truth of Jesus Christ. What's more significant in all this that I that I gave to all of them your word. And that's why the word hated hated them. Because they're not of this world. Dear brethren. We have the word of Christ in our hearts. It is given. It is a miracle. Let me simply describe this. N no man has met the f love of God the Father and the Holy Spirit except through the Jesus Christ g gospel and no one else knows the, knows the baptism of the Holy Spirit except because and how significant it is which what do people say about the baptism they say well let's give a name to him it's like a christening no one, no one outside in the world knows the plan of God. No one in the world knows his future. Uh, that it depends 
that it depends on God the Father, the Son, Jesus Christ, the Holy Spirit. It does not depend on each, on, on each one of us. And none of us knows in the world, well, actually none in the world knows the details of the heavenly kingdom. This is a miracle that Christ gave us his word and all of us. We know everything. Behold, I told you everything and we ha and you have his gift to know everything. It's not a church, it's not a university, even though it is. But church is a lab of Christ and the, of the Holy Spirit that works through the christening of the Holy Spirit in order to understand the scriptures and all of us we are taught by the Holy Spirit what happens with ins inside here for example for not to have any smokers to listen with great attention the Word of God to long the Christ as it is written as it is written that all we faint all we lose the strength especially in the latter days but those who wait on the Lord will renew the strength in order to make it to the holy mountain of the Lord to run for the present, the present uh, struggle and path and plan that God prepared from before the foundation of the world for His own children, it's a special God, special excuse me, a special nation, a holy nation, a uh, chosen nation. It's a holy priesthood. It's, it's the truth. I see you and I r realize this truth because we all understand the Word of God. Y young, old, older, younger, smarter, and less smart. And we all understand this because we all have the same teacher. And that, that is Jesus Christ. We thank the Lord. <clears throat> and that's why only on those people whom God gave them to Jesus Christ, He sends in order to do His work, to do the work of His Father. Ah. As you send me, I send them. All those who, of whom I'm praying, and we read. And now the uh, I, uh, the prayer expands, not only for his disciples back then, but his disciples always, in all ages. Now I'm not praying only for those. I'm also praying for all those that will believe in me through the I'm praying first from the words I'm praying first for those who believe because of the word that I gave and you and I'm sending them and as I'm sending them to preach the word that I taught them and you gave me father and now I'm praying also for those who believe in your word in your word that comes through the preaching of the er, of the very first disciples of the very first apostolic church and the prophets meaning the gospel of Jesus Christ it's not Peter that teaches us and Paul Christ Paul teaches us through the 
preached word, the written word of Peter and Paul. Christ always back then and now prays for all of us who believe in the gospel of Jesus Christ because it's written from his early disciples. We didn't believe in a man. We don't worship a man. We don't glorify man. We don't trust in a man. No, we, we, neither do we wait on a man. But studying the word of God, we, we met Jesus Christ and him crucified. Jesus Christ and our teacher and Pavaclet, the Holy Spirit. Lord in the church. Why Lord? Because we are ruled by the Holy Spirit. And we don't walk by the flesh, but in the Spirit, because the Spirit teaches us from those which Christ gave to the disciples to write for us. So Paraclet, the Spirit of Truth, teaches us from within the word of the uh, fishers, the uneducated fishermen. Paul, Peter, Paraclet, the true God, teaches us of the uneducated man, these uneducated private people, wrote to the Holy Spirit, the Word of God. And this book. The Spirit of Truth teaches us, because there's another, there's no other book that the, the Paraclete teaches us from. All the universities, uh, universities and and schools have their own books. Here, our teacher is the Paraclete, the Spirit of Truth, the Lord of this church, and teaches us from this book the gospel of Jesus Christ that people wrote the same nature like us. That is wisdom. With the wisdom of God. We didn't, we didn't learn about the kingdom of God from the, uh, from, from the wisdom of man, but the ki from the wisdom of God, the gospel. From the f foolishness of the preaching that God, Jesus Christ prayed and sent, we met and learned the wisdom from above, the one that was hidden, the eternal one from above. The gospel of Jesus Christ is terrible or awesome because it's been revealed to us where who are insignificant, which God the Father called us, sent us to Christ. Christ prayed for a specific prayer and sent them. And thus the kingdom of God expands to the, God, the fully God-inspired Word of God. Do you, do you love the Word of God? Do you love the Word of Peter, of Matthew, John, of, of James? What was of those people that the writings differ so much? Those people are those whom Jesus Christ prayed for and used. They're, they're the ones that wrote through the Holy Spirit, the Word of God. That's, that's when we don't say Peter, John, and James. It's the holy and true Everything will pass. And what everything will everything will end. On the word of God remains forever. And this word of God is the the word of Peter, the fisherman, the uneducated man, of James. Hallelujah. Because we live the miracle, the miracle of the mysteries of heaven. 
But now us, the wretched, the nothing, the useless, establishes stewards of the mysteries of the kingdom of God. Wow. You and me and I makes us general managers to manage the mysteries of the kingdom of God. And not only that, but he also makes us some stewards of the multi varied uh, favor of God. Likewise, we, c we can exclaim like Paul, all the depths of the wisdom and riches of the wisdom of God. How infinite are your wills. You, as the Holy Spirit dips us in the dwell and takes us to the depths of the wisdom of God to know the things that in no man's heart or mind have entered and though but are those truths that the God the Father has revealed. We thank God the Father. It's not only that we that we have revelation but he does even something even more important. He gives us his word which is working in, in the midst of them in the midst of us which is sharper than any sword and enters even the division of soul and spirit. And everything is naked and opened in the eyes of God. And we admire and we humble ourselves recognizing, knowing that we are nothing useless wretched that we th but we found grace from God the Father the all wise the all good who is merciful and compassionate <coughs> and in him the word becomes yes and amen and he regenerates us he reveals to us regeneration and he regenerates us he reveals to us baptism and he baptizes us he heals us once he reveals that to us and he's the head of of the church and will come to take us to be with them isn't that amazing there are no words human words to describe not to gl glorify the glory that's suitable to cr uh, to god and not even to shout when you enter this majesty that's called depths of God. Oh, woe to me, the the wretched man, be, because I I will perish. I'm a man of defiled lips in the midst of, of people with defiled lips. You, you shut your mouth and you wait. That's why our Lord, He prayed for, for them and He sent them. Now, likewise, through His Word, through His Holy Spirit, He prays for us in order to send, send us. That's why the Church of Christ it needs that's why the church of Christ needs to be apostolic he didn't choose them and reveal them the 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 mysteries of the kingdom and said and said to them afterwards stay here and hang out but he sent them gave them powers gifts go and preach and speak also about the mysteries of the kingdom of God for of the love of God of the grace of Christ speak the word mine that I gave and a place in your heart I revealed it to you and I made it to be yours 
you have my word within you. That's why, Father, I don't pray only for them, but for all those who that will believe in me through the word of them, so that they may be one, and so that as I am in within you and I in you, for them to come to within me and all of us to be one. What is this unity? And what's the result of this unity for the whole world to believe? Yeah, you sent me. That you sent me. Unity and the truth of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Truth, unity within the truth of God. So in this unity, all people will enter through belief in Jesus Christ and knowing that you, Lord, me, you sent me, Father, the Lord Jesus Christ to them. And I, and I, the glory which you have given me, have given to them. What is this glory? It is the Holy Spirit. There's the scriptures. If we love others, one another, and we have the uh, connection of love, which, which is love, the love of Him is perfected within us. And from this we know that we live within Him, we dwell in Him, and He dwells in us from the Spirit that He gave us. From the Spirit that He gave to us, that He gave us without measure, He gave to Christ, He gave to me as well. And I give to them as well. He, why? Because we need to create the uh, new unity of the Holy Spirit so there may be one as we are one. But how? In a different way. I in them, giving them the glory that you gave me, and you within me. I, I in God, let, actually, I within people and you within me let me say it differently the unity of faith that we have as a result as a result of Christ was sent to the world the world is created by by the truth of how as you father you within me and father and son are working together and as a result, we, they're coming to dwell within us, in this unit, and within this unity of, of faith, so that this, the world will believe with this unity of faith that you sent me. So in the end, to believe the unity of you and I are one, Father. They in me, and you, Father, and the and actually, in the, in the end, is for you, Father, to come and enter them. The, fir the very first time, the, un the unity starts with the Father and the Son. It invites us through the faith, through the truth, to enter inside of the Father and the Son within that unity. The re this is a result, so resulting in the world to believe. Christ is within us and Christ within us and within this unity of two human uh, the human uh, human unions is that God the Father also enters in and we also do the Father and as re and resulting becoming be perfected into oneness, perfect within the oneness of the Holy Spirit, resulting not only for the world that you sent me, Father, but, the, but the, for the world to recognize that you sent me, the, 
and that you loved, uh, that's why you entered, you l that you loved them as you loved me. It is, it is very different in the spiritual life from the unity of faith because the the act, act, acting agents are a father. So, so in the fr in the unity where the angel is Christ is Father and Son, they have a unity, and the unity of the Spirit is for the Christ to unite with humans and Father to enter in, and for Father to enter within the the Son, Jesus Christ, and us. And that's where the love and oneness is perfected. And the result is for the world to know that you sent me. And second, that the world will know that you love them with the same love that you loved me. One perfect fruitful combination of the Father, the Son, and the, and the Man. Perfected in one. Why? <coughs> because the glory w with which God the Father gave to Christ and Christ came and gave it to us. Our perfection happens through the Holy Spirit as fa the Father is the Father comes, there's no obstacle. It's the open way. The perfect love of man with Christ m making us one. And there's a new w spiritual reality that opens. And the new reality being the f God the Father leaves his throne and enters man through the Holy Spirit. That's the within the unit that's perfecting Jesus Christ. And now man is perfected through Jesus Christ within the Father. And is that is the cause and that's the cause why the world will know Jesus Christ is sent by the Father and knows the Father loves us with the same love that he loved his son, Jesus Christ, his only begotten one. It's not only beloved bro brethren, but it's also and more important is that we're experiencing this, we're living this, not only to know this, which is amazing, know this, but to experience this perfection that comes from the Father because Christ gave us the glory that God the Father gave to His Son, Jesus Christ. That is the glorious church. And that's the one that God will make. This is, n this is not a church that's been crea created with human effort. It happens only through the Holy Spirit, says God of the Almighty. Holy Spirit is the tool, forgive me, Father, the person whom God uses for the perfection of the saints. Without the Holy Spirit, there is no perfection. It doesn't exist. Without the Holy Spirit, without the power and the glory, we cannot have the glory of God. It cannot be a glorious church without having we will be being unblemished and without having any wrinkles or spots. It cannot exist that kind of church without the glory of Christ, without with the Spirit without measure, which Christ gives without measure, the Holy Spirit without measure. If that is the church. This is the church of the rapture. The Holy Spirit will give. 
just like Christ gave us the Holy Spirit without measure. And the last petition of the Lord is the end of all things. Father, after all these things that you will do, and I don't want and I don't want anything to happen what I'm reading what we are reading now, Father, what I'm saying to you now, Father, unless first the things that I asked you before happen. I want you, Father. Father, I desire also to be where I am so that they may be, see my glory which you have given me, for you love me before the foundation of the world. Before that happens, though, the intercessory prayer has to be fulfilled, which is the uh, perfection of the saints and the unity of the saints with, within God the Father. The Holy Spirit will enter within a perfected unity. It's what we haven't seen yet but something that we hope not only to to see but we we'll live just like all saints hope to see the, even those that have already passed away the full church righteous father the world has now known you but I know you only I have known you, Father, and they have known that you sent me, and I revealed your name to them, and I will continue to reveal your name to them, so that uh, your love within you love me, within them, and I in them. It's one prayer started out of nowhere the time has come that's what he said at the beginning of this prayer glorify your son now so that your son may glorify you and the glory the son is asking from his father is for the son and the church of Christ to be one and uh, receive receive the glory of God the Father. And with the entrance of the Almighty God, with that within the unity, and the unity to have the the perfection and of the unity of the God that has with his son and God has with us, which are tin cans, which are insignificant people, that perfect union to have with the Father. The time has come. Glorify me with the glory which you have given me before the foundation of the world. The world has not known you, neither can it know you, but I have known you. And I reveal you to them, and they have known your glory. And they have revealed your name. And I, will I reveal my name to them, and I will continue to do so. To continue, and I will continue to reveal your paternal love, w so that the love with which, with which you love me, to be within them. And I repeat, so that the love with which you love me, Father, to be within them, and I and I myself to be within them as well. So there will be a glorious, perfected, glorious, without a wrinkle spot, blameless, a church that God will send and will also will receive in the air in order to perform the marriage of the Lamb, Lamb and the Church, and the Bride. Remember, in all these 
and all these glorious things. We only thing we have is a want. We ha we desire, Lord, to experience and enter for those things we have predestined for us through Jesus Christ, uh, in Jesus Christ through the Holy Spirit. <coughs> it's not for us to be a be able, but it's for us to want, and Jesus Christ can is able to. And we, amen, we have a lot of joy. And we'll live this. And we'll experience this. The one who stands to the end is the one who experienced this. Amen. Let us bear till the end. <laughs>